Hello and welcome back. My name is Shannon and I'm the owner and creator over at Knotted Threads Co. I'm back with my fourth PDF pattern called the Aries Crossbody. It's available now on both my website and on Etsy and I'll be sure to drop the links for that below. This is considered an intermediate sewing pattern, so you do need the basic sewing skills and you also need a little bit of bag making experience under your belt. A little bit about the Aries Crossbody is that it has three main compartments, two of which are identical or mirrored, I guess you could say, um, zipper pockets here, one on the front and one on the back. You can choose to have your zippers go opposing directions or the same directions. I give you options for that in the pattern, but the pockets run the full height and width of the bag on both the front and the back, so you get a good size pocket there. You also get a center gusset area to store away the things that you need easy and quick access to all the time, such as your phone, your keys, sunglasses, your wallet, etc. There's also a uh, interior zipper pocket for more private storage um, and this little gusset flap secures these two pockets together so it doesn't gape open if you start filling it with a whole bunch of stuff. There are three strap options for this bag, crossbody, shoulder, or a hybrid between the two that features some chain accents that are pretty cool. You can totally opt out of all of those and just buy a really fancy chain strap and pop that on there and that's even better. I would consider this to be a small bag, um, but I think that even though it's on the smaller side, um, it's still completely functional and it has great organization to it, so despite its size, it's totally great for everyday wear. I won't get into too much detail about what's included in the PDF pattern, but if you want further details on that, feel free to ask below, or you can find all of those details on my website, on that product listing, or on Etsy. And without further ado, let's get to sewing. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using um, Mora vinyl from Emmeline Bags. I really like um, the look of this vinyl. I love the texture that it has, the thickness, and it's super friendly for all machines. I just want to go over the exterior pieces for you real quick. We have uh, the main panel, the gusset, upper main lining, um, upper gusset lining. I'll be doing a uh, 3 4 inch width uh, crossbody strap as well as the uh, bonus strap that is included in the pattern. Um, these are the D-ring connectors, uh, again for 3 4 inch hardware. This, these are your um, exterior zipper tabs, and then you have your gusset flap right here. Also, I just wanted to show you um, how much vinyl is left over after you um, cut from an 18 inch roll. So because this wasn't directional, I didn't have to worry too much about how I arranged things. I could arrange things as compact as I wanted to, upside down, all that good stuff. And so this is what I have left after a fresh 18 inch roll. So um, could I get a second one out of this? Potentially. Um, it just depends, again, on uh, if you're using it for a full exterior or if um, you want to pair it with fabric. Um, you would probably need a second uh, roll to fully get the strap um, unless you are doing just the bonus strap or a chain strap. And then I think you could actually get a second um, bag out of an 18 inch roll. For the lining fabric for this bag, I am doing a full woven lining. Um, this is a bit of a lightweight uh, canvas. Um, this is from Zombie Bunny Fabrics. It's one of my favorite Lord of the Rings fabrics. Because I'm making this bag for myself, um, I'm using, I'm making a Lord of the Rings theme. So I have, um, like I said, a lightweight canvas for the uh, lining. These are the main um, zipper linings. There are four of them here. These will be cut with your main panel piece. And then I have two lower main linings here. One is cut shorter than the other. This is your interior zipper lining, and um, I am choosing, again, a lightweight canvas for this. This is your lower gusset lining. And then you'll have your interior zipper tabs. Um, one note is that if, and this stands for the um, exterior fabric as well. I do offer you um, an option to use directional fabric um, and for your uh, gusset, either interior or exterior. 
um, there's a line, a dash line toward the middle of your gusset. You would just fold it on that line and then cut first. Um, you would cut, you'd fold it in half your pattern piece and then cut the normal gusset and then fold that dash line um, at the top down again and then you cut along that line. Uh, make sure you're cutting all four edges so that you get two separate pieces and then later on you will sew them together and then create a single gusset uh, to be used in the lining and the exterior. You can use waterproof canvas for your lining if you'd like to. My preference, as with everything in the pattern I am writing to my preference, um, is lining because I do think, or I'm sorry, is um, woven lining because I do think that woven just really settles so much nicer than waterproof canvas or water resistant canvas, but I know a lot of people really prefer waterproof canvas. You just wouldn't cut any interfacing, so you would just call all these pieces out of waterproof canvas and then totally skip any of the woven interfacing for any of these. All right, I apologize. I know this is really hard to see because it's white on white, but it will only be for just a minute. I just wanted to go over the interfacing and stabilizers and then your options if you would like to um, substitute those for other available um, stabilizers that you can get. And so as you can see, I have a lot of uh, woven interfacing here. For any woven pattern piece that you have cut, you should have woven interfacing, except for the um, interior zipper tabs, you don't need to interface those. Um, those are fine as is, but for everything else, you definitely want to interface it if it's woven. For the main stabilizer, I am using fusible fleece, uh, thermalam, and so it, this is my preference for this bag. I like that this bag has a soft bodied structure. It doesn't slouch, it doesn't flop over or anything like that. Um, it has a nice soft feel to it that you can squeeze and then it'll pop right back and it'll be just like that. There will be no wrinkles or anything. Um, you are also getting some of your structure just from the sheer amount of main panels that you have on each side of your bag. Using waterproof canvas will give you a little bit more structure, but also you may find that again it doesn't settle down as super nicely as a woven would. Um, but if you really want it to be a little bit more structured, you can feel free to swap out your fusible fleece for something like, um, I think Bouncy Firm is an option, um, or Decoville Light, that, yet that is asked a lot about Decoville Light, and you totally can. The bag is a birthed bag, but it's a very wide pocket, and so the berth is super easy. You're not gonna encounter a ton of wrinkles. Now, um, do I suggest that you use a um, stiff stabilizer like Decoville Light with a stiff, um, vinyl for this bag? I do not. And that's just because it's meant to be able to collapse a little bit more on the side, so you don't want anything too stiff on the gusset side. And if it's too stiff uh, and, you, and you're using something like uh, Decoville Light, uh, when you turn it out, it's going to be really hard to press it to be really nice and smooth and flat and wrinkle-free. So just keep in mind the combination of materials that you're using with your stabilizers. There is a little bit of Decoville Light in the bag because that's where we're going to be stabilizing some things. Um, this is your upper gusset uh, lining stabilizer and so this will be where on the lining side we want to make sure that we have interfaced that vinyl properly so that when we punch the rivet through the vinyl and the fusible fleece we also are punching through vinyl and Decoville Light on the lining side so that we are stabilized enough to support that rivet and the D-ring that it is securing. So there will be two of those and then we have tiny little squares of Decoville Light that will be supporting our magnet installation. One more thing before we move on to hardware is I wanted to point out that um, I do offer SVG files for um, everything except for the interfacing because I feel like sticky mats plus fusible fleece and glue dots on woven interfacing just isn't a good combination plus all of them can stretch when you pull it off of the adhesive mat um, and I just didn't think that was a good combination so you'll have to cut those by hand but um, I also cut all of these pieces by hand myself. I cut it as close as I can now, and then what will happen is when I go and sew them all together, I'll then trim them as close as I can um, to be nice and neat, and then when I edge paint around them, um, 
any small imperfection is really going to be kind of masked by that um, edge paint. So I wouldn't stress too much. If this is kind of deterring you, if this part right here where you're cutting it by hand or you don't want to do the cutting machine or you don't have a cutting machine and you're afraid that these aren't going to turn out, okay? If you look at any of the bags I've made um, of the Aries crossbody, every single one of them, uh, of these pieces are all cut by hand by me. I don't use my cutting machine anymore, um, mainly because I want to show all of you that I, it can be done and it can look great every time. In this pattern you have either one inch or three-fourths inch hardware that you can use uh, for your straps uh, or for your D-rings. You can use either 14 millimeter magnets or 18 millimeter magnets. That's totally up to you. Both will work. Um, and you'll be using number five zipper tape as well as number five pulls. And then for the bonus section, there are some strap extenders that you can get and use. You could use a chain. This is a 44 inch crossbody chain that um, I'm just going to show you how that will look with this bag. Um, you'll need your tri glides and snap hooks. If you're making your own strap, you will need D rings regardless. Um, you'll need some uh, rivets. Uh, you can really use whichever size works best for you. For me, 8x8s are my favorite. That's what I use more than anything else. I'm also going to add a decorative um, magnet plate here. I'm not going to use it as a magnet, and so this will be inside the bag, and all you'll see from the outside is the plate. It's from Thumbs and Thimbles. You'll also need three number five zipper pulls. I'm again using some Lord of the Rings themed. Uh, these are also from Thumbs and Thimbles. So uh, you have options here as far as straps go. Um, if you are going to do the bonus option, you will need two uh, additional uh, D-rings. I do write it for 3 4 inch hardware, so you'll need them to be that size. Uh, but if you are not doing the bonus strap, then you won't need those or these. Whenever I make a bag that calls for edge painting, I always do it uh, at the very beginning, even before I'm fusing any of my interfacing or stabilizers. That way I can give it time for the edge paint to dry so that when I install it onto the bag or I sew it on the bag, if that's what I need to do, I'm not going to damage any of the edge paint because it's not dry yet. So we start first with the gusset flap, uh, D-ring connectors, and edge painting. So. You'll need all of what is pictured here, but we're gonna first start with the gusset flap. So first thing you'll do is you will pick just one of your um, gusset flaps to do this on. And you will take your gusset flap pattern piece, or if you have your projector up and running and you used your projector, you could always do that. If not, you're just going to need to print out the pattern piece, unfortunately for this. Um, it's just kind of how it goes. So what I do with mine is I kind of use some double-sided tape on the back of my paper pattern piece. I don't know if you can see that. And then I put it on the back of my paper pattern piece and I kind of put it on my shirt to pick up some lint so it isn't super sticky. But it's tacky enough to hold onto my pattern piece without uh, doing any damage to it or anything like that. Just enough to hold it still so that when I'm tracing out the pattern piece for cutting or doing something like this, it stays exactly where I need it to. So I'm going to transfer that marking there on the right side and on the wrong side. I'm going to do it right here so I don't put that mark on my table. Again, we marked both sides. And that is just so that we can use this marking here. We know it's centered and we know it's going to be centered over where the magnet will be installed. And we're just going to fuse this piece of Decoville light centered the best that we can over that dot. All right, I have fused my Decoville light to the wrong side. And so now I will go back to the right side and place my washer right over that circle that I drew. And then I will transfer these lines from the washer. Now that the lines are transferred, I will carefully cut through the fabric and the Decoville light using a blade, and then install the magnet. So I just went and pushed it through, and then put the washer on, and then I'm going to fold over both sides. I like to fold towards the center, toward the center on this one. And then before I fold over my other one, what I actually do is I take it to this little um, 
block that I have, a steel block, and I hammer it down gently with a rubber hammer, uh, and then I will fold the other one down and, and hammer it slightly as well. So I will do that and come back and show you. All right, I have went and hammered it down very gently, again with a rubber mallet uh, and my little steel block, just so that it is nice and flat and as flush as I can make it, and it's uh, more firmly secured than just my finger pressing uh, could manage. And so I've done that, and now I have a, a roll of half inch wide um, duct tape that I like to use. Um, this is my favorite type of duct tape to use for back making just because it's easier to rip by hand and typically when we're using this and back making we're using it to cover small areas where hardware is installed and um, I've just found that half inch is really helpful for that. So I just covered that magnet there I made sure I kept it out of any uh, st top stitching that will be done up here. I didn't run it the full length or anything like that. And so now that I've done that, I'm going to take some 1 8 inch double sided tape and just run it along the length here. This uh, double sided tape is from geekyhardware.com. Um, this is my favorite. It's very strong. Um, I use my 1 8 inch more than anything else. Um, and it's easily terrible. I really love it. And so now that I've installed the double sided tape, you could do two strips, I just did three. Then align the bottom straight edges and the sides as best as you can. Again, if you cut this by hand right now, this might not be exact, but just try and get it as close as you can. Don't uh, overly pull, overly stretch or anything like that. Just make sure that you're giving it a nice good press to secure all that double sided tape and you're making it as even as you can. So now I will take this to the machine and I'm going to start right here on one of these corners with the magnet facing up. And I'm gonna use a 1 8 inch seam allowance to sew around the outside of this piece here. I'm gonna go as carefully as I can. But I suggest uh, using a narrow foot if you have it or a um, zipper foot or something like that to give you a nice narrow seam allowance without having to interfere with the magnet. Now you're going to have an easier time with the 14 millimeter than you will with the 18 millimeter magnet, um, but it's again, it's I want you to use your stash. I don't want you to go out and buy special hardware for this bag, and so you can use what you will. You just going to need you you will just need to uh, use feet to accommodate your hardware size when it comes to this. Okay, I have already sewn this once, but I forgot to hit record, so we will do it all over again. We are at my uh, Juki 1341. It's an industrial cylinder arm machine. I am using a size 17 needle and Tex 45 thread. I am starting down that bottom corner and then going to just continue to the other end. And that's close enough for me. Checking my tension, looks pretty good. Now you see I already went through and pulled through this top thread because I don't want to wait until I'm done stitching because if I wait until I get through this bottom hole and I put my needle through there, there's a chance that the needle will go through this thread and it'll make it hard to pull up through the top because um, it will be knotted. Uh, you, your one thread will be knotted through the other thread and it'll just make it more difficult. So do this before you reach that bottom point. Make sure that again you are sewing this whole section with your magnet facing up. And then finish your thread hopefully in the last stitch hole that you, or the first stitch hole that you made or close to it. Then I will trim while well, I will pull this top one through the top. So, <laughs> I will pull the bottom thread through to the top, just like that. Then I'm going to knot all of them together. And then because I'm using bonded nylon thread, I can uh, knot it, trim it, and then melt it to secure my stitching. At the machine, we just stitched everything. And then I said I would pull it through to this side, knot it, and then trim and melt my threads, which is what I did. And then we'll work on the D-ring connectors. So for the D-ring connectors, you're going to do them exactly the way you just did the um, gusset flap, but you are just not going to have to install a magnet. 
So you will put them, or on just two pieces, you'll put some double-sided tape down the length. The important part is to keep it out of your seam allowance. And then align the edges with another piece wrong sides together and then get it nice and adhered so you have a two-sided D-ring connector. Okay. You have a seam roller, you can go ahead and use that to just fully adhere everything nicely. So now you will take these to your machine and you will start top stitching at the point, at the center of one skinny curve and then go all the way around the outside edge. Again, you can use either an eighth inch or a sixteenth inch seam allowance or something in between. Um, just go all the way around. Um, you will start with long tails and end with long tails. And then if you have a wrong side to your fabric, uh, or like if you have um, just pick a side really, uh, whichever one is going to be what you call the wrong side, but you will pull your threads to that side, then knot them and melt them or put some super glue on them um, so that they that knot stays and holds and doesn't come up. Um, and then we will move on to edge painting. So I will do that and check back in. All right, so I have just finished uh, stitching around the edges of the D-ring connectors. Now these are much more forgiving than you would expect them to be. Remember, you're only going to see this portion of it for the most part. Yes, you can look inside the bag and see that side. You see I didn't have perfect stitching there and that's okay with me. Um, again, this is just for me, but even still it's not that noticeable. It's going to be inside the bag, kind of smushed on the sides a little bit, and you're going to have a D-ring or a Chicago screw right there. So don't stress too much. But what you do want is to try and get even edges for uh, edge painting. And so as you can see, I told you my piece was all hand cut, so it's not going to be identical from one to another. So I just trim after the fact. Alright, so I'm not even really allowing the flame to touch the fabric at all. I'm just keeping it just away from it so that the heat of the flame is singeing the little fuzzies. I just want to get it so that um, when I do my first uh, go around with base coat, um, I'm going. I'm not going to have too many fuzzies to contend with. All right. So we have those done. For edge painting, um, you will need to go all around the edges of the D-ring connectors the um, all edges of the gusset flap and just one edge of the um, exterior zipper tabs. Honestly, when you fold it in half and you have a zipper under there and you open up the zipper, you honestly aren't able to see underneath of the zipper tab. So you really don't need to do the bottom one. For a while I was top or uh, edge painting both, but then I was like, you honestly just don't need to. So I don't do that anymore. I only do the top one, and I just make sure I, I kind of melt away or uh, singe away any fuzzies on the bottom one, and that works for me. So uh, my tip for edge painting is always to build up your base coat. Um, I use Giardini Base Coat Dense, but I typically do um, three, sometimes four coats of a base coat dense. I know that's a lot and that leads to a long drying time but um, it really gives me a nice finish and again it will mask any imperfections of a hand cut piece. It kind of just fills in all those weird spots and then you get a nice finish at the end. And But that's for two layers. For one layer I will do one, two layers of base coat dense and then uh, that's all I really need for a single layer. But for the color, I will do one to two coats. It just depends on the paint. Like if I am using uh, Giardini colors, they run to be, they tend to run a little bit more thin. So I'm going to do two coats more than likely. Um, if I am using um, other paint brands, then I will do a single 
coat if they are a little bit on the thicker side, um, similar to like Mojo's, um, Mojo Sews paint. Uh, they, theirs are a little thicker, so I do actually dilute it down with water a little bit. Even still, it's thicker, it has great coverage, so sometimes I just do the single coat for them. So, I will do that edge painting, and then when it comes time to use these pieces, you will be able to see what that edge painting looks like. And so now we'll move on to the fusing and marking of the rest of our pattern pieces and actually get to really, really sewing. For marking and fusing, I'm going to allow the pattern to really go into depth there, but I just wanted to show you that when I tell you to mark a half inch in from the sides, I don't need you to mark the full side. It's just something that is, it helps you easily center your interfacing because the interfacing is made to be a half inch smaller on all edges from your pattern piece. When you go and you press them on, um, use if you're using fusible fleece, make sure you use steam, that helps there. If you're using Decoville Light like this, you don't need steam, just make sure you get a really nice fuse on that and then uh, let it cool down. For your uh, woven pieces, if you had any woven pieces, uh, they need to be interfaced, as I said before, with woven interfacing, you're just on the wrong side, it will line up perfectly and you just fuse it there. One more note before we move on to the main lining panels. Um, for all of your main panel pieces, as well as all of your upper main lining, lower main lining, zipper pocket um, lining, and gusset pieces um, outside of your uh, upper gusset lining, you should be marking the centers of the top and the bottom. And it's a lot easier to do it now all at once, but um, if you want to do it as you go, you can totally do that. But it's really important for that zipper installation that um, you have all of your top centers marked, and then for the gusset installation as well. For your main lining panels, you will need uh, both of your upper main lining pieces, both of your lower main lining pieces. Remember, one is cut slightly shorter. For these, I've already marked my centers. You could do darts if you wanted to. Um, I just did snips because it's a little bit easier for me to find the exact center that way. Darts are easier to notice. Um, you have your interior uh, zipper pocket lining, your number five length of zipper tape, your four interior zipper pocket tabs, your number five zipper pull, and if you'd like to add in extras, you can add those in as well. So the first step for this is simple. It's just inserting on your um, zipper pull onto your zipper tape. I know some people struggle, struggle with this, so there are zipper jigs available that you can use, but I just kind of taught myself how to do it easily. So I just put Separated about one inch, I put from this way, just in a little bit. Second one goes in a little bit, and then I make sure that I'm not inserting it on while it's uh, slanted to one side. I'm just kind of pulling it back slightly till I feel it click into place, and then I press it down, and it's on perfectly. One thing you can do is just make sure that when you cut your zipper tape, you cut it as straight across as you can, and then when you insert your zipper, Pull on, you can look back and see if the teeth um, align straight across again. And if they're off by one, um, by one like tooth, then you know that you inserted your zipper pull on crooked. And what will happen is when it closes, you'll have a tiny little gap where it will be pointing up or down uh, versus having a nice, even centered gap right there. So we want to insert it to be about halfway on. And then for your zipper tabs, what you'll do is you'll take one and you will place your zipper tape right on, sop on top of it, right side up, and then you'll take another one and you'll place it right side down on top of that. So now you have wedged the zipper tape in between two pieces of zipper tape, or I'm sorry, of uh, zipper tabs. And then you'll do the same for the other side. Now that you have it all clipped together, you will just sew um, along this short edge here using a 3 8 inch seam allowance.
And so now I will take this to my iron real quick and just give this a nice press with them pushed back to be wrong sides together so that this zipper tape is fully exposed. Now that we have pressed this to be fully exposed, we will just top stitch an eighth of an inch away from that folded edge on either short end on the zipper tab. Okay, so now I have top stitched it. I've made sure I back stitch and I trim my threads down. And so now I'm going to place this on to my cutting mat or I'm going to use a ruler and I'm going to find the center of this zipper tape. Now since I'm not including measurements in this video, I'm not going to show you doing that, but I will say that I put my ruler, I just measure in between the folded points of my zipper tape and find the center that way. I don't use the edges of my zipper tabs to find my center. I just feel like it's more accurate for me if I use the points in between the zipper tabs themselves and it's a little easier. Okay, I've marked both of my uh, centers on the top and the bottom of my zipper tape. So now it will be time to baste it. So you will take your shorter of your lower main lining pieces and then you will place this right side down and you will align those two center markings and then secure. Now I prefer to have my zipper open from the left so that looks like this when I lift it up. If you prefer to have it open from the right, just be sure to orient your zipper pull pointing the other direction. And then you'll clip these two edges as well. And then you will sew and baste along this top edge here using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. So now we have basted on this zipper onto the shorter lower main lining. We will then grab our interior zipper pocket and you want to make sure that if you're using directional fabric for the pocket and you want to be able to open that pocket and look at the directional fabric correctly, then you place it upside down on this seam. I know that feels a little bit backwards, but this is the seam that when it's turned, you won't be looking at it. It's that back seam that we want to make sure is oriented properly. So just make sure that you're putting it upside down for this part. And so align the, the center marking that you made before on the lower main lining with the interior zipper pocket lining and clip there and along the edges as well just like that. And then we will sew along this edge here using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. As you get to your zipper pull, make sure that you are reaching under and just zipping it out of the way. Now we will flip everything to be wrong sides together. So we'll flip this down and tug a little bit to fully expose that zipper and we'll take this to the iron and then give it a nice press so that it will be nice and flat for when we top stitch it in just a moment. It's been pressed nice and flat. I've exposed the zipper as much as I can from the fabric. And so now what I will do is just top stitch it using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. So now that we have pressed it and top stitched it, um, we will then need to flip up that uh, interior zipper pocket lining and match up the center marking here again with this center marking that we put on our interior zipper pocket and then clip along that edge. Now we will baste it. So now you'll see when you open it up, your fabric will be right side up when you're looking at it from just from the outside of the pocket. But if you were to pull this down, you'll see that this is upside down. If that really bothers you, you could always um, work on cutting the interior zipper pocket in half, add on some space so that um, you're accommodating um, the lost seam allowance and all that good stuff. Uh, but you could make it work if you want to. But as I've written it, even with directional, I'm okay with that in my bags so that's just how I wrote it. But now you will need your upper main lining that has the stabilizer on it 
And so you will place this right side down and align this long straight edge with this straight edge of the zipper tape and just make sure that you match up that center marking there on your um, upper main lining with your other center markings and clip along the straight edge. Now that you've clipped it on, we will sew along this straight edge up here using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. You'll want to start at the angled edge here and then end at the other angled edge. And that should bring you lined up almost perfectly with this um, angled edge of the lower main lining. So now we have sewn on that upper main lining and we will want to try and give this as good of a press as we can. If you can't really press it all that well with your iron because you're using vinyl or faux leather, that's fine. Give it a seam roll, but then top stitch this edge uh, 1 8 inch. I'm going to do that at the industrial and then I will check back in. So I'm not so great at these video tutorials, but I'm and I'm trying to remember if I told you whether or not to use the um, upper main lining with the stabilizer on it. Now the reason for that is so that later on this will be where the female half of the magnet goes. Now it's my preference to have the female half of the magnet on this side so that when I'm opening it, so this is going to be up against my front of the bag and so that I'll have my little magnet plate on the front and I'll be looking down and it will be easy for me while I'm looking down to pull apart my gusset flap which is right here and then unzip my zipper. But if I had my gusset flap there, I might in installed here versus that magnet, then I might have to continuously flip it out of the way, and that would be a little annoying for me to do, and I didn't want to do that. Um, so that's, this is why I wrote it the way I did, with uh, the stabilizer piece on the side with the zipper. You can totally flip it, or you can omit the... Um, gusset flap altogether if you really wanted to, um, but as written, that's just how I have it. So I did top stitch this edge here, I made sure I back stitched, um, and then I also gave it a good press. And so what we'll do now is just trim these little um, extra bits off of the zipper tabs. I just followed the curve of that angled edge. And then now I'm going to move my machine out of the way so I can show you. So now I'm going to flip this edge up here. I'm going to use my ruler and uh, 3 quarters inch in from this edge I'm going to draw a line. I'm not going to go past this uh, seam allowance with the line. It's not necessary. Especially if you're using a lighter color fabric you don't want to risk it. Um, so 3 quarters inch on either side. And then while you have your pen and your ruler, just also draw a line that's 3 quarters inch from this bottom folded edge. Now it's important that while you're doing this whole process that this is going to stay laying flat down and you've just tilted or you've just flipped up this lower main lining to be pointing up and out of the way. And so what you want to do now is you want to take your scissors and cut along this three-fourths inch line on either side. You're going to start down at the fold and cut all the way up till you hit that seam allowance, but don't cut into that seam allowance, just cut right under it. Same for the other side. Then you'll go in from the side right under that seam allowance and you'll trim that edge off, just like that. So now when you look at it from the side, You'll see I didn't cut any of the seam allowance here. I didn't cut into my zipper tab or anything like that. I only cut the zipper pocket lining. So now that we've done that, we're going to cut along this bottom edge here. We will then clip along this bottom edge to secure it. You will take it and turn it upside down. And again, flip up this upper main lining, I'm sorry, lower main lining. Make sure everything is as flat as it can be. And then, using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, sew up this side. So as I'm getting close to this seam up here, I'm going to go slowly. 
But the most important part of this whole thing is that you do not want to sew into your upper main lining at all. So where you see it folded away, if you can tell, um, this folded edge where the upper or lower main lining is folded back over itself, do not puncture that at all with your needle because what will happen is you will create a small pucker because you're going to then pinch your fabric. So you don't want to do that. Just get as close as you can, but don't go any further. You can see this is the folded edge. I don't want to sew right here. And that's where my stitching stopped, right below it. I'm going to do the same for the other side. This time I'm going to start at the top just because it's easier for me to follow my seam allowance marking here. If you're going to do this, just be careful because if you're back stitching, you don't want to back stitch too far because it's just harder to see uh, with your fabric in the way. But then do a 3 8 inch seam allowance, again, all the way down to the clipped edge. You can take these clips off. And then you see this line left over here? If you didn't draw it yet, because I tell you to do it just a little bit later in the pattern, like right now, then that's fine. You draw your 3 4 inch line, and then you use your scissors, and you'll cut just the seam allowance close to but not into your stitching, okay? Just like that. Do it on both sides. Now what this is going to do is if you didn't do this, what would happen is in this next step when I tell you to open up the seam allowance, you're going to be forced to open up some of this part of the seam allowance. And what's going to happen is it's going to want to do it halfway, halfway, and then none at all because we've top stitched everything to not do that up here. So doing this horizontal clip into your seam allowance will allow you to open up this seam allowance here, fold up these edges here so that you have a nice folded finish for closing the bag, but you'll still maintain this nice plat flat profile of your uh, zipper lining without causing any extra bulk anywhere except for just in these edges and we're going to manage that as much as we can just by opening it up and folding it back on itself. I wanted to bring you back here just to give you a better view of how this um, folding works on the um, zipper interior zipper pocket lining. So we've cut that there and then we fold it up on either side and then we'll press it nice and flat. Now as you fold it up on this side, you're going to fold it up and then you're going to kind of like, don't pull it really hard, but just kind of make sure that everything is flat as it gets bent. So that what happens is you get the most gradual amount of bulk there as you can. And so what happens is later on when we go to close up the bag, we'll pull it through just like this. And we will lay it down. And again, we're going to push it now back the other way, making sure everything stays nice and flat. Pinch it back down like that on either end. And we'll have a really nice finished edge. And when you push it back in, you're not going to catch any more of this bulk here, it's not going to be pointing up. It's going to get pushed back down. So all that bulk is going to kind of lay really nice and flat inside of your bag and it should be right at the bottom of your bag because we're going to be sewing this with about a 5 eighths, so it's going to be right about there. So you'll have this full depth of the pocket inside of your interior. I am going to go ahead and sew up my labels here or that I want on my uh, lining. Here's a little tip for you. I did not line up my uh, stitches perfectly here for the last hole and so what I did was I left my the top threads sit there instead of pulling them through and I grab a normal hand sewing needle and I find a good spot that should be the corner 
and I will poke it through and then I'll just feed both of those tails through that needle and then I'll pr pull it through and they both match up in the same hole without really having to try too hard. All right, we have sewn on some labels. If you wanted to do a fun little woven tag, I like to do it on this seam here because on the other side you have the zipper which is folded in a different direction. And so for top stitching, so it's a little bit more finicky to add it there. So I tend to add it on this side. And if it's going to go in the seam, I like to add all my woven labels just off to the right for whatever reason. And then I like to put my logo um, just on the inside on the center just because I know that some of my customers and other people don't really like to have a name brand on the outside. So I just try to keep it like this. Um, but now it will just be the non-pocket side. So this one is of course the one that you have left over which would be the taller of the two lower main linings. And then this one will be the uh, remaining upper main lining and it will have no stabilizer on it. So you can go ahead now and align those center markings and then clip. Then we will sew this seam along this straight edge using a 3 8 inch seam allowance and then we will top stitch it using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Alright, so now we have sewn that seam and we're just going to press this upper main lining up. We're going to allow the um, seam allowance to point up and we will just press this the best that we can and then top stitch along this seam here on the vinyl side on the upper main lining side using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. So I will do that on my industrial and then we will check back in at the table so we can move on to the next section. Both of your main lining panels should now be assembled and top stitched and we should be ready to move on to the next section which is the main zipper pocket assembly. Um, if you haven't yet, go ahead and make sure that you double check um, that your um, edge painted pieces don't need any love or attention or additional coats or sanding or anything like that. Uh, keep up on those so the sooner they are done and ready, the sooner you can complete your bag. For the main zipper pocket assembly, um, you will need uh, pretty much two complete groups of pieces. So you'll need two main panels, two main zipper linings, two main lining panels now that they've been assembled, assembled two uh, lengths of number five zipper tape, two zipper pulls, and two exterior zipper tabs. Now make sure that your um, edge paint is fully dry. So this is me doing a uh, single or two, I think it was two layers of edge coat or, or base coat dense and then two layers of color. So it gives you a nice rounded uh, professional finish there. And um, at this point we can just pick one side. I like to start with the zipper side. It doesn't really matter. They are going to be done the exact same way each. So just pick half and then we'll get started. I'm not sure if you can see that, but we're just going to pretend that I didn't get um, edge paint on my big board here that I'm using. <laughs> of course I did. So, um, but the first step is going to be uh, taking your length of number five zipper tape and then making sure that your edges are nicely sealed there by just melting it gently. And then we're going to do, um, we're going to finish the edges of this zipper tape. So I'm going to grab a pin so I can have it handy. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is separate it about an inch, just like that. Then I'm going to take this top edge and fold it over to meet that finished edge. And it's going to create like a point, just like this. And that's what you want. All right, so we have that. And we're going to take that whole point and fold it back on itself. And what we want is all three edges to line up perfectly. The long edge and the two edges of that point. You may need to pinch and reconfigure it, but as long as you get all of those three edges lined up perfectly, you're going to have 
nice consistent curves on your zipper tape on the end here. Okay. I'm going to do that one more time. So we have our edge, top edge, and we're going to fold it to meet this long side edge. It's going to create a point. That whole point will be folded back on itself here and all those three edges will then line up. This folded edge here should be perfectly aligned under those teeth there. Then you want to pin it to secure. Doesn't really matter how you pin it, but I do recommend that you, when you base this in the next step, you are very careful that you don't sew over your pin. Just make sure that you are sewing the needle, needle in your sewing machine is completely missing that pin as you sew. Okay. So when I'm going to take this to the machine, I'm going to start right here and then sew all the way up to just into the teeth. Then go back and then forward again so that I can base this and hold it nicely. And you'll see that when I come back. So this is exactly what you want it to look like. You want to have those three edges lined up. You want that point tacked down and you don't want a gap in between that fold and those teeth. Now the benefit of doing it this way is that if you cut your zipper edge straight across here and you made sure that you have even edges right there, when you repeat this process for this side, it's going to be even across the top. There's no trimming of anything. There's just folding properly. And to me, that's my preference because I can get it consistent every single time. I have done this hundreds and hundreds of times by now, and it is absolutely the best method that I have found. And so that's why I do it this way, and that's why I will always instruct you to do it this way because it's, in my opinion, the most consistent and easily um, done method that I, at least I have found. All right, I've just done the same for the other side. And you can see it matches up evenly when you fold it, when you sew it, it'll be fine. So now what you wanna do is go and take this to your cutting mat and trim it to the length that I tell you. Now that you've trimmed it, make sure that you re this end here so that we don't have any fraying down there. And then you will grab your zipper pull and insert it onto your tape. Now see how I put that on earlier? I had mentioned that this is what will happen if you put it on crooked. Now you can see that the teeth there don't align. So what I want to do is not, I'm not going to pull it off all the way. I'm just going to pull it off up top until I kind of, well, I guess it pulled off all the way. But normally I try not to do that. And I just reinsert it and I just feel for the clicks. I keep it on there as much as I can and I just feel for a click and, and I just can tell now when it's <laughs> installed properly but um, if you aren't at that point yet just give it some time and you will. So now it's on and you can zip it all the way to the end. You'll see it's still even and when you open it you'll have a nice open and then a nice even close. So then we want to install the zipper end on here. Now it was important that we have that straight edge here so that when we put on our um, zipper tab we are sure that it's even. So the first thing we're going to do is put a little bit of double-sided tape on the end. We will remove that double-sided tape backing and then just kind of pinch this around the end of your zipper tape. Get it as even as you can. You want to try and make sure that you are getting it as aligned with each fold as you can, like that. You want it to be straight across and you don't want a gap between the edge of your zipper tape and the inside fold of the zipper tab. Make sure that your uh, finished edge is at the top of your zipper like this and then we will sew along this edge here using a 1 8 inch seam allowance from this edge 
of the uh, zipper tab. We won't be sewing this folded edge, only this edge right here. Now that you have sewn on your zipper tab, make sure that you trim any of your threads. Uh, and then I want you to find the center of each side of your zipper tape. I also instruct you to make two marks on either top corner of the wrong side of your main panel. So do that now. Now we will want to apply some double-sided tape. Um, it's important to use eighth inch double-sided tape here. If you do not have eighth inch double-sided tape, then you can lay down some quarter inch double-sided tape onto some like um, wax paper and then um, cut it in half using your ruler. So what I've done is apply double-sided tape from pretty much just outside of that curved edge to just outside of the other curved edge. I'm gonna remove that double-sided tape backing. I'm gonna take my zipper and place it right side down on top of my main panel. And I'm gonna align those center markings. The installation of your zipper here using the uh, double-sided tape should be as exact as you can make it. You wanna follow this curve almost exactly with your um, zipper. The more consistent and accurate you are in this process, the easier it will be to have a more consistent zipper. And the more consistent your zipper, the better your outcome will be. Okay, so we're gonna start from the center and then work our way out. I'm not really pulling, I'm just making sure that nothing is getting wrinkled or puckered. And I'm just making a nice, smooth, progress along that curve with the zipper tape and the double-sided tape. And then I'm gonna go back to the center and work my way out again. Now I don't work from fully one side to the other because that just encourages some sort of traveling and not being centered. So I always like to work from the center out for all of these uh, for this process right here. So for when it comes to basting this on, I want you to baste it on using a quarter inch seam allowance versus a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And that's because I want to get closer to the actual seam allowance that we will use. And I also want to steer clear of that double-sided tape. If you don't have super strong double-sided tape, that's fine. Just further secure that placement with some clips So now will be time to sew on the main lining, uh, the main zipper lining. But before we do that, we want to make a couple marks. So on the main lining panel, it's good to trim any extra interfacing you may have. So that you're making sure that your measurement is accurate. And then measure in one inch from this top corner doesn't have to be super accurate. You know, you have an angled edge here and a flat edge up top. Just get it the best you can and just transfer the corner marking down here. Just enough so where you can see it, okay? Same with the other side. Now that you've done that, just align your center markings again and clip. So I've clipped it there. Now what you want to do is flip it back over. So you want to flip it so where you're looking at the main panel pointing up because then with, at that point you'll be able to see your stitching from before. And if you are using um, a thread that is similar to the color of the wrong side of your fabric, you may want to mark it so that you can see where your starting and stopping points are, something like that. Now the importance of this is because we don't want to sew outside the zipper. So we're going to follow our, we're going to use our uh, basting stitch as a guide of when to start, but we will be sewing with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. You may need a hump jumper to start. You may not. Um, just go slowly and consistently. If you need something to use as a reference on your machine to make sure you're following your seam allowance accurately, I would definitely do that. Um, 
that's the most important part of this of the of a curved zipper is maintaining consistent seam allowance uh, not only between sides but within the same seam if you sew uh, a three eighths inch here and then go up to a half inch or then or close to a half inch, or go down to like a quarter inch, it's going to create changes in size and tension, and all that's going to do is create kind of wavy ripples along your zipper, and that's not what we want. So you'll sew along this whole seam, making sure that you're following your main panel edge and not your lining edge, okay? They should be aligned, but just in case they become misaligned as you sew, make sure that you are following the main panel, because that has is what has been properly aligned with the zipper. So now I'm getting close to the edge where I can't really see exactly where I need to stop. So I'm going to lift up my foot and just take a peek. I know I've got about two more stitches. And I'm right on that line now, so I'm going to back stitch. So now you want to look at the the wrong side of your uh, zipper main zipper lining just to check out your seam allowance see how consistent it looks throughout so this looks pretty good for me so now what I will do is grab some of my double sided tape again and I'm going to put some right on these corners doesn't have to be a whole lot just be, needs to be enough to secure this corner where we want it to go if you have half inch um, double-sided tape you could totally cut off like a square and then cut that square in half so you have a whole corner to use and that will hold it even better than uh, two strips of eighth inch but this still works for me so once you've removed that double-sided tape backing then fold this corner down to meet that one inch corner now I know this seems a little bit wonky but it's so that you can have less of a bulky seam there in those center gussets. Because there's so many main panels, we got to try and get it out of that corner. So we're going to manage it by getting it out of there. All right, so we've just finger pressed those down. Then we're going to go to our main panel side and just put another strip right here on or like right above that three quarter inch line. So before we move that double sided tape backing, we are going to flip this right side out so that these bottom wrong, uh, wrong sides are together. And I'm going to clip them along that bottom edge. And then I start tugging just a little bit. This is going to make sure that our zipper pocket or our zipper is fully exposed. Then we're going to reach in here and remove this double sided tape and just pinch this down so that we have now created a kind of faux seam allowance there and just clip on these edges to just secure it there. Now maybe you can see that once we've done that, when we sew the final bag, we won't have that seam allowance right up here with this seam allowance. It's going to kind of miss it completely but we're going to take care of all of it. It will be nice and closed up. It's just a way to manage bulk. Repeat that for the other side. So there we go. And so I always, I am a sucker for a preview, so I will just flip it down. And you can see we're already at the beginning of a really nice, pretty zipper. Now we want to take this to the ironing board and give it a good press. Be careful because you will have your vinyl exposed here and on these corners. Just make sure that you're pressing from this side, from the lining side, and you want to continue to kind of tug on that zipper the best that you can. You really want to expose it fully so that when you top stitch it, you aren't accidentally pressing up this lining here too, too close to the zipper. Since we're using a full seam allowance, if this lining rides up when we top stitch, what's going to happen is it's going to cause your zipper problems trying to close, and we don't want that. So pressing is really important here, making sure that you've got this clipped down here fully at the center and at the bottom. All of those things are important steps, not only for the look of the zipper, but for the functionality as well. When it comes to top stitching your zipper here, you're going to top stitch from edge all the way to edge. 
but it does get a little bit um, awkward as you go because you have this curved zipper. It's only a slight curve, but it's enough to make a difference. And as I go, I just use my nails to kind of gently make sure my zipper is fully exposed. I already know everything's good down there. The lining should be fully pressed nice and flat. And then once I get past my zipper, I just use the zipper itself. You don't want to pull too, too hard. You just want to keep it taut. So now it will be time to repeat almost that whole process again for the main lining side. So you will need your another uh, main zipper lining as well as an assembled main, um, pan main lining panel. So I'm going to kind of zoom through this um, just a bit so that you can see me do everything, but it's really the same process we just went through before. So once you've applied the double-sided tape and put your zipper on there, your uh, panels should line up nicely on the side. Because you have made sure that everything was aligned with that center mark first and you've worked your way out, everything should maintain its same spot. For the lining side, I do not have you marked down uh, three quarter inches from that top corner, but you do mark the corners on your main zipper lining. So now we double check our seam allowance here. Looks like I might want to go back over here a little bit, just be a little bit more consistent. Okay, so I just fix that. Because that seam isn't being separated, it's okay to do that. Now I will go through and put on my double sided tape in the corners. I'm going to remove the double sided tape backing again and just fold it over again to meet those corners. Alright, both of those have been folded under and now just like before we will fold it to be right sides together, or I'm sorry, wrong sides together and then align that center marking down at the bottom and clip along that bottom straight edge and so this time, instead of um, using double-sided tape for this area, we're, we're just going to let it be. You can clip it down there. I tell you to clip it in the pattern. It, sometimes it gets in the way. Nice little zipper preview. Can't resist. So you want to keep pressing and tugging and expose this zipper as much as you can. And then take it to your ironing board to get it nice and smooth and flat, just like we did before and then top stitch this side. Don't laugh at me too much but I just want to show you how I get everything fully exposed here that I can. So what I will do is lay this with the vinyl side down on my mat and then I will use my thigh and very carefully press here while I'm tugging the other side. That'll give me my first little press. But now, since it's a curve and these want to pucker up, we need to do it this way. So again, I will use my thigh to make sure that it stays nice and snug here. Be very careful. Mora can handle a hit from the iron. A lot of vitals cannot. Now I have it flipped the other direction. So what I will do is very carefully use my thigh to hold my work in place like I have been. But this time I'm going to use the tip of my iron to further press that lining away. 
Be careful if you're using steam because you can burn your thigh. Just be careful doing this. But this is important, again, for that zipper functionality, not just for the final look, okay? We want to make sure that we can use our bag when we make really pretty top stitching and all that good stuff. So, now that I've done that, I'm going to clip these again. So for the lining seam, you will not be stitching across from edge to edge. You will only be top stitching alongside the zipper, okay? And because now we have the curve on both sides, it is a little bit more awkward. So you want to make sure that you position your needle to be right at the edge of that zipper tab. I am kind of angle, I'm kind of pinching the uh, main panel exterior side uh, so that it keeps the um, curve angled in the way that I want it to. And then I'm going to start top stitching. For this one, it is important to start with long tails so that you can neatly pull all of those uh, stitches back to the inside or in between some layers. So then we'll just continue on. Now as you go with this seam, you want to keep manipulating it to be to follow that curve and give the area where your foot is a flat surface. As we're getting back to this area where it curves up again, I'm going to have to kind of continue to pinch that exterior side. So we've top stitched all along the zipper and not outside of it, and we've left long tails. And so we, I will show you how to bury those tails in between your seams here at the table. So here is our completed side, almost. We just need to bury these threads. Now, if, as long as you've backstitched, you really don't have to bury these threads in between the seams. If you want to just pull them to the lining side knot and melt them, you can totally do that too. I'm just showing you a way that I like to do it because it keeps it um, nice and invisible from most people. First thing is I will pull my thread. Just be careful if you're not using a bonded thread because it can break potentially. So you just got to be gentle. No hulk pulling here. Then you will reach in here and find where that thread is. So I've loosened that final stitch tension just by pulling, right? So now that I have loosened that tension there, I'm going to try and pull it through back to the middle between those two seams. I don't want to tighten it, but I do want to get it back where it's a little easier to see. So your first stitch of that seam is going to be a little harder to pull through because you've sewn through that hole more than once. So you kind of just need to play with it just a little bit. So I've got one side of it. Now I have one side of it, but I want both. And it's going to be a little harder for me to pull the other side through if I fully pull one side. And I know this is really hard for you to see me doing here until I get that other loop through. So just bear with me. It is just hard to see, period. So I've got it. So now I have two loops here from either side of this seam. Then I'm going to just put my seam ripper through those two holes and I'm not cutting them, I'm just using this dull edge. And now I have buried that thread in between that seam right there. So then I will knot it and melt it and that will be good to go for there. We'll do it again on this side. This one's easier because it's my ending thread which means this is where I pulled the my pulled my work from my needle so the last stitch here is going to be super easy to pull out. Now before I move on to my next step, I want to install my magnet, so I will go ahead and do that now. The next part will be to baste your main panel and the two zipper pocket linings here together and then you will leave this main lining panel out. You don't want to base that. And so it does get a little finicky here because of the 
the craziness we did on the lining side, uh, but it's totally manageable. We can do it. Uh, we just need to take our time. So for this, I break out my handy dandy stapler, and then we're going to align the middle or the center markings of the bottom of the main panel and zipper linings. And then you can staple. If you want to clip here, you can definitely clip. My preference is just the staple. I'm stapling at a quarter inch because I know I'm not going to baste at a quarter inch, but I'm going to be basting at an eighth of an inch, so I want to keep it away from my needle. Now when it comes to these corners up here, you want the seam allowance of everything to be pointing to the bottom of the exterior main panel, right? So you want to have this seam allowance here of the main lining corner. You want to have that that's loose aligned with this folded top stitched seam allowance of the main panel. You want it to look like that. It's going to take a couple times. You might it's going to it might you might have to staple or reclip a couple times. Once you get it in place, it'll be fine. Sometimes it's a little hard and you just got to keep going until you get it right. And so this one was one of those where it was giving me a hard time. But it will all be fine when I'm done. I'm going to go through now and I'm going to baste from this top folded edge here all the way around to this top folded edge here. The only thing I'm going to do differently in, in this base is I'm just going to make sure that I backstitch here on either ends to really secure the placement of uh, that seam allowance there. So now you have basted your main panel to your two main zipper linings and you've kept it separate and free from your main lining panel. You are done with this half of the bag uh, and you will just repeat this whole process uh, for the other half, of the other main zipper pocket. Now I'm going to zoom through this in the video. If you want the detailed explanation, you can always rewind and rewatch that section. Um, I will just pause at one point in here to explain to you how to get uh, opposing or same direction zippers for the end result of your bag. For this side of the bag, the only thing you really need to be aware of um, is how you want your zippers to open. If you want both of your zippers to appear as if they're opening from the same side when you look at the front of your bag, then for this, at this point, right before you remove your double-sided tape backing, or I should say after you move, remove your double-sided tape backing, instead of aligning your zipper pull to point to the left, you want to align it to point to the right. That seems counterintuitive, but um, because your zipper pockets will be kind of wrong sides together, whatever you do is going to be reversed. So if you put it the same way as you did the initial one, it's going to end up flipped, but if you do it the opposite way, it will end up on the same way. So it just kind of do a little bit of backwards thinking there, but um, just trust me on this. Um, I've had a couple testers who did it and um, they tried <laughs> to kind of think their way through it and then ended up um, getting the opposite result of what they wanted. Um, but that's the importance of reading through the whole pattern first, not to throw shade at anyone, but just 
because I do give you instructions on how to get that result um, right after you finish your main pocket because I didn't want to confuse anyone during the initial process uh, I wanted I'd rather have you understand how it works and then tell you how to achieve a different result if you wanted to do that so just make sure that uh, you have in mind what you want and then uh, do what I said which is reverse it if you want them to open from the same size side leave them the same if you want them to open from opposing sides For attaching the gusset flap and magnet, you will need both uh, assembled main zipper pockets, your gusset flap, your female magnet, and your uh, magnet um, washer. Just to show you the edge paint, this was um, about four, I think it was four coats of base coat dense and two coats of color which gives me a really nice rounded edge. There's no lines in the middle between my two layers or anything like that. It's very smooth, very consistent all the way around. I don't really have to sand when I do this many layers of edge coat. Um, I don't have to smooth anything out. It auto levels on itself. Um, and I've made sure that I let my coats dry in between. So anyway, edge coat is one of those skills that's really great to have and once you get your own kind of recipe down, it is extremely helpful for a lot of different parts of back making. On the main lining side of your main zipper pockets, you'll need to place some center markings for your gusset flap and for your magnet. Now you can reverse these if you want. You can put your gusset flap on your magnet or on your zipper side or you can put and you can put your magnet on your um, non-zipper pocket side. That's up to you. And so I've placed my dot there, I've placed my short vertical line toward the bottom of this upper main lining, but it's centered. Some testers have expressed some difficulty in finding the center of uh, your main zipper pockets at this point in the pattern, and I can see that being an issue for some. I did this for two reasons. One is that um, I don't want anyone having to mark these and then smudge them throughout the creation or lose them with removable ink or anything like that. Um, I just personally don't like having ink sitting on my fabric while I'm in the middle of creating because there's so many things that can go wrong with that. 
but also this is when I like to do it and so that's how I wrote it. Um, that's my preference. If you are having a hard time, come in with a 12 inch ruler. You'll be able to see what's left on either edge uh, to help you identify the center there. And then um, come, on, come in from the top of your interior zipper pocket side and then you can just use it anywhere. But I also like to align this bottom fold with a measurement here along this so that I make sure that I'm not only centered and um, I'm not only level, but I'm also centered. And again, I reference my ruler on either side. And so this is just a 12 inch ruler. Any 12 inch ruler will get you to where you need to be to find those centers. Once you have found those centers, go ahead and grab the washer and you'll place that right on top of that dot and then just transfer those lines there onto your upper main lining. Now I will take a blade and very carefully I'm going to open up these seam allowances behind that are nestling back here. And I'm just going to very carefully, I'm not going to stab my fingers hopefully, but I'm going to poke a hole or cut that slot with my blade. Now I'm starting from the same direction so that my blade is hopefully cutting the same depth on each one and I inserted it in the same spot so that my magnet continues to stay centered. So if you're using a 14 millimeter magnet, um, that washer will fit behind there, okay? And so then you can let it, well, allow it to sit behind all of those seam allowances and just press that those that uh, the prongs open. If it if you're using an 18 millimeter magnet, it will not want to do that. It will want to sit. It will not really fit comfortably in between those seam allowances. So you will have to press it forward, but you should have enough space there. And then the prongs will go through all of that. And then you will place the prongs or the washer through those prongs on top. Press everything down nice and flat, and place a piece of duct tape over it. On your gusset flap, down toward the bottom where your straight edge is, on the magnet side, you'll need to draw a small vertical line centered horizontally. Once you've drawn those lines, apply some double-sided tape along that edge. Try to keep it inside of that top stitching that you've already done and do two rows of double-sided tape. Now you will take this main zipper pocket where you've drawn that line there You'll remove the double-sided tape backing, and you'll use those two lines to help you center it. So now you will take a ruler and measure in a half inch in from this bottom edge painted straight edge, and then draw it on top of your gusset flap between these two lines of stitching using a removable ink pen. I've drawn that horizontal line between my rows of stitching, and I, it's a half inch up from the bottom. I'm going to insert my needle here at the machine and then follow my stitching along until I hit that half inch line. Then I'm going to stitch across and then stitch back down and then stop there at the same needle hole I started. Now it's important here to make sure that you leave long tails because there will be no back stitching. We're only going to be securing this with this thread um, and this stitch box. So when we're done, we're going to pull all of our threads to our wrong side and then we will uh, knot it and um, secure those threads. Make sure you open up your zipper so you can put your gusset flap in there so you can get and get it out of the way nice and easy. And then start in the same hole you started when when you first top stitched your gusset. And try your best to stay in the same holes. Before I get to my bottom, I like to pull my or before I get to the starting stitch, I pull my bottom thread through and then I just continue on across. So I just finished with my stitching there. It's not perfect, but it's fine with me how it is. Um, and then I will just pull this last top thread to the bottom and knot all four threads together and uh, either put a little dab of glue or uh, knot and uh, trim and melt them. And the last thing will be to remove any uh, 
residual ink left over. So now I have removed that ink. And so you'll see when you go to clasp them together, that's what your gusset flap will look like when your bag is all done. The next section will be your gusset assembly. This one's really fast and easy, so let's get to it. First thing will be to lay your gusset, lower gusset lining right side up on your work surface and then place your upper gusset linings right side down on top along either short edges and clip to secure. Once you've clipped them, you will sew along the straight edge using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure that they're evenly uh, secured, like mine was a little off there. That way you have a nice consistent uh, match up here on these angled edges. Now that you have sewn these both of these short edges using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, use your deck of a light or stabilizer as a visual reference and snip vertically into the seam allowance at about that point. Just like we did before with the interior zipper pocket, do not snip into your stitching, just get close to it but do not snip that thread. Now once you've done that, what, you're, what you'll be doing is allowing these to point down, these two snip sections to point down, and allow that middle seam allowance to point up. I like to clip them to secure. So now what you will do is start on one of these short edges and then sew up to the vinyl part, the upper gusset lining and then sew across using a 1 8 inch seam allowance and then sew back down. Now the point of making that like U shape is so that we can keep all of the snip sections where we have cut them and we want them to go. So it's easy to forget to move this down or keep this down later on. So it's just easier to tack it down now with our uh, top stitching and then we don't even have to think about it later. So I like to start on this side and I know I've got this seam allowance down, this middle seam allowance up, and this other one clipped and ready to go. So I will just start here. So I have my seam allowance, my top stitching done there, and my seam allowance tacked down where it needs to be. I'll do the same for the other side. Now I will take this and I would take the gusset lining piece and place it right sides together with my um, gusset and clip along each short edge. And so now I'm going to sew these short edges both with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. It's important to make sure that your uh, top stitch or that you're not using your top stitch length here that is longer than your construction length because um, this seam will be separated later on so if your stitches are too far apart that will be visible in the end result of your bag. If you're looking at the pattern you can see that I accidentally did that for my pattern bag and it's not a deal breaker but it is just a tiny little thing that you can do that makes a difference in your end result. Now it's time to start on the final assembly. So for this you will need both of your main zipper pockets and what I call your gusset loop. So for one side of your, it doesn't really matter which one you do first, you, you can do the uh, back side or, or however, it, the process is going to be the same for both. So you would take one of your main zipper um, pockets and open it up so that the non-basted side is uh, separated and then you would take your gusset loop. Now what you'll first do is align the bottom center. All right I want to make sure because I'm gonna look in my bag from this way and I want it to be aligned so that I can read this stuff while looking down. Okay, So I want it to be this way don't mind me. All right. So I will take, I will align the center marking of my gusset with the center marking of my uh, main panel here, and then I will staple it. 
The next part we will staple will be the where these upper and lower lining pieces meet. So you'll have a little junction there of a lot of different seams. And so my first thing is I align the vinyl and the fabric where that meetup is, I, I align those together and then I will staple it. Then I'll do the other side. Now you'll see that the reason I had you move this seam allowance down is because now it will nestle quite nicely in between the uh, two seams here for where we sewed our zipper on. So it should nestle right into that uh, zipper tab area and that just gives us a more consistent level of bulk there versus a larger one had we left it pointing up to the top of the upper main lining. So then once we get to this seam right here at the where we did that funky folding, we will open up this seam allowance on the where the gusset and the gusset lining match up and we're going to staple all of that together. I like to do another staple right here in between. I know that they're really close, but you'll see when you're sewing it that this part wants to do some weird things and so the more you can secure it now the easier it will be later. And so I'm aligning that folded seam allowance with this center seam here of or with this opened seam here of the gusset and uh, gusset lining. So then you will continue to align the remaining straight edges. Once you're gusset starts to pull away from this curved edge, just leave it be. Don't try to make it work any more than it already is right now. Now that you've stapled all of your straight edges, you're going to need to snip into your gusset about a quarter inch in and a quarter inch apart. Don't go any deeper than that because then you'll start getting too close to where you're going to be sewing and you're sewing around a curve which is a little bit more challenging for most people than straight lines. So once you've snipped your gusset, you'll see all you have to do is gently press it down and it will perfectly fit into that rounded corner and then staple to secure. So we have stapled everything and now we're ready to sew this seam. So we're going to start at this bottom edge here with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. I know that seems like a lot, but um, we really need to make sure that we accommodate the extra bulk on the inside or on the exterior of the bag with the stabilizer, with the main uh, lining panel, and the zipper pocket linings. So we need to make sure that we are giving it room to do all that so we take a bigger seam allowance. So starting at this center point down and on your lining side, you will start sewing a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And you're going to sew around this curve. Once you hit this seam, this seam junction here as I like to call it, you are going to stop with your needle in your down position. Then you will angle your work and you see in the pattern I tell you to tug on your work slightly as you sew. See how it wants to close like this? You, want, you don't want it to do that. You want it to be nice and straight. It wants to close, you want it to be straight. So you'll stop here at this junction with the needle in your down position, pivot it, and then you will grade up to a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now, if you have a hard time figuring out where that 3 8 inch seam allowance is on your bag or on your machine, then just before you even do that, take out your ruler and draw that line right there on your fabric so that you can see it when you get to it. You will continue the 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way around until you hit this seam right here. Then you will stop with your needle in your down position, angle your work, and grade back up to a 5 8 by the time that we hit this junction. Once we've hit that junction, continue the 5 8 inch seam allowance all the way around until you are at your starting point again, and then back stitch and you will
Move on to doing any trimming. I want you to do another stitch right alongside those stitches you just made where the junctions are. Where any seams meet another seam, I want you to go about like right next to it, like within an eighth of an inch. Um, and then that way we can further support that seam. Part one of the scariest part of your bag is finished. We're through that first leg. Uh, so now we need to trim down the seam allowance before we can move on to part two, which will just be repeating the same process but on the other main zipper pocket. So now we need to trim down these straight edges to be about a fourth of an inch. You can go just shy of that, but don't go any less than an eighth of an inch. Um, that's just not a good idea. Uh, so you'll do that on this straight edge, these two straight edges, and again on this main uh, lining panel. For the curved edges of the lining side, you can use your uh, pinking shears, that's what I do, but on, your, um, on the curved edges of your exterior, you want to be sure that you are using your scissors to cut some darts. And so I'll first cut down the straight edges and then I'll explain to you how you need to be cutting your darts on your rounded corners of your exterior. Make sure that you are not cutting your interior zipper pocket when you do this. For the darts, I explained to you in the pattern to use your little snips here as a guide. And so what I do is I kind of just follow every little snip that I did and then match it up with the next one. I'm not really putting my scissor tip any deeper than uh, an eighth of an inch or I'm at an eighth of an inch. And I'm just going and doing darts. And the reason I tell you not to use pinking shears and to cut darts uh, manually for this part is because the darts that you cut manually are going to go deeper and they're going to allow for more, um, they're going to take away more of the seam allowance than your pinking shears will. And I will show you that, what it looks like on the inside of that curve so you can get an understanding. Another reason to follow the snips that you made is so that you know that you are putting darts on the full extent of that curve. So when we snip darts like this on a gusset, that is while we're sewing on the gusset, you are sewing on a convex gusset, right? And that means that it's going to spread and go around outside of a curve. But once you turn this to be right side out, this curve then on the inside becomes a concave curve. And so you now have too much fabric inside. And so what that snipping does, that those darts do, it allows the seam allowance to compress down without wrinkling. And because you are allowing it to go where it wants to go without a wrinkle, it will give you a nice smooth curve as a result. And so that's what we want and that's why we do that on the exterior side. So now that you've done Part one of the scariest part of the bag, we'll move on to part two, which will be just repeating that whole process that we just did sewing on the gusset on the one side, on the other. So again, I'm going to zoom through it. Um, you'll still watch me do the whole process, but if you want a detailed explanation as to where your needle will go, where you will be grading and all that stuff, you can always rewind the video. One thing to make sure of before you uh, finish stapling or clipping is that you uh, open up your zipper, your interior zipper pocket to be about halfway. If you are sewing on your interior zipper pocket in this step, then just be sure that you don't open it all of the way. And I just, I don't recommend that at all because, and actually for any of your zippers, I would just recommend having them all halfway open. That way, if they are longer, and they tend to lay closer to the side seams. As you're sewing, you don't have to worry about accidentally breaking a needle or puncturing the 
the new, the pool or anything like that, um, just keep them all in the center of the bag. And then when we're done sewing and we're going to turn it, we can always finish opening that pocket. Now the moment of truth, we've done all of our trimming, all of our sewing, and there's no final top stitch on this bag. Yay! So let's go ahead and get it turned. So open up that seam allowance all the way, or open up that zipper all the way, and then birth your bag. Now the beauty of that nice wide pocket down there, and the fact that the bag isn't so large, is that this is relatively easy to birth. And there you go, that's the beginning of the end of making your Aries crossbody. So what you'll want to do now is give it a good press. So definitely roll your seams between your fingers. Make sure that you are kind of exposing that seam the best that you can. Do this on both sides. And then either there, you can press your bag easily two ways. One, if you have a small, um, a small iron, definitely that's the way to go. If you don't have a small iron, you can fold up some cotton fabric and have it fit nicely inside here. I tend to make like two squares and shove them in right next to each other. Make sure that you're making your bag as full as it can be and then use a pressing cloth or another piece of cotton woven on top of it and then press and steam it nicely. And do the same thing on both sides. Also, good idea to open it up like this and press it down. You always want to make sure that you're using a pressing cloth because of your vinyl. You don't want to hurt that at all, especially at this stage of the game. Um, but just be careful. And so I like to give that a press now. That way I can see everything before I close the bag. So I want to give it a press, make sure everything is nice and pretty and where I want it, and then I will come back and uh, press and I will close up my zipper pocket. And then I will uh, give it one more press to make sure everything is 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 nice and flat and crisp. Now take a moment and appreciate all your hard work. Look at your beautiful bag. Only a couple more steps left. So now, like I said before, we will take out this zipper pocket. Now open up this edge right here. Make sure everything stays nice and flat and press it back together so that you're still getting that smooth seam allowance with no wrinkles. Okay. and clip. Do the same on the other end and then clip along that folded edge. And so now we will simply sew along this folded edge from edge to edge. 
using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. As you can see, I have sewn that edge using a 1 8 inch seam allowance, and so then I'll just tuck it back into my bag. Now in these bottom corners, you just want to press them fully into the bag. It will resist at first, but then they will go in there, and you'll feel from the inside of your bag, not the inside of your lining, but you'll feel that edge down there, and it should be right up against that bottom edge of where the seam is, but there's no crazy bulk that you're going to feel in there, so that's good. So we're going to give it one more press, make sure everything is nice and flat and smooth in there, and then we will put some glue in these corners. The last step here for the bag itself will be to place a small amount of glue on these inside corners that are open. Now remember when we top stitched this zipper on the interior, we didn't complete our top stitching all the way to the seam so that when we constructed the final assembly, we could have it opened up. So now what we have to do is we need to close that up so we don't have a gap that something like a chopstick could go into. So you need some fabric glue and you need it to be an applicator tip that is a bit um, uh, pointy, <laughs> a fine point, there we go, uh, a fine point uh, glue applicator. I'm just going to let it stop seeping out. And you'll need to make sure that it's completely clean. I like to just grab a scrap of fabric or right here I have a, just a scrap of woven interfacing and what I'm doing is just making sure that there's no glue coming out of the tip, there's no pressure pushing out the glue, and it's nice and clean. And this is because some fabric glue that you may be using can rip off the finish of your vinyl, so you don't want that to happen. And so just make sure you're starting with a clean tip, and then just put a small amount here right at the top. Just a little bit of glue, barely enough to see. And then take a clip and just clip it closed. You're only using a small amount of glue in this small area, so be careful with it and make sure that you're only using what you need. So we're going to set that aside to dry for a bit. A small amount of glue wedged between two layers isn't going to take too long to dry, but you do want to let it sit for about 5 to 10 minutes at least for it to set, and it will, f and then various glues will take various amounts of time to actually finish curing and be totally set. But we're not really ripping this bag apart anymore, we're only going to be putting on the D-ring connectors here, so just let it sit for about 5 to 10 minutes and then we'll move on to the D-ring connectors. So I'm going to finish allowing the glue on my bag to set just a little bit more, but I'm going to start the prep work for attaching the D-ring connectors. And so you'll need both of your D-ring connector pieces that have edge painted, have been edge painted and are fully dry and ready to be installed. You have your two D-rings at whatever hardware size that you chose, and make sure that the hardware size for that you chose matches up with um, the D-ring connector um, size that you cut and sewed up. And then you also need two rivets or Chicago screws. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to mark for our rivet holes on the D-ring connectors. Now I have a very old and very loved beaten up a D-ring connector pattern piece here, so I'm just going to put that on and get it all lined up. Alright, now I have it centered on my uh, piece and on the, on the right side of my D-ring connector is what I've attached it to. Earlier I told you that I do apply a little bit of double-sided tape onto the back of my pattern pieces when I need to do something like this, and so that's what I do for these. Once I've applied it on there centered, I'll then transfer my rivet hole markings and I'll do the same for the other. Now if you had to trim a little bit of length off of your D-ring connector after you sewed it to make the edges even, that's okay. You have a little bit of grace here for the rivet hole placement down in this uh, wider area, so keep it 
consistent with this top edge and then drop this down or bring it up as you need to. Just don't bring it too, too far up or bring it too, too far down. You should only really need to be moving it about an eighth of an inch or less up and down. Just make sure it's still centered side to side. So now I'm gonna go take these to my uh, hole punch and I'm gonna go punch holes in all four marks. So this is the um, hole punch that, is, that I use and I really love it. I can't stop recommending it. It is spring loaded here and it's got these pulleys so you're not really applying that much pressure when you're doing anything. Um, you can change the various heights of all of these things to determine how much depth you have between here and here and then how uh, long it takes, how much you have to rotate this handle, this lever here, to then drop your tool down. You can swap out whatever hand tool you want. It goes up to a relatively large size, but I believe you can swap out this tool right here to enable you to use even wider hand tools. Um, but I always prefer these sorts of hole punches because I think that they just are sharper for longer and they're way cheaper to um, to replace and so I just can't stop recommending this. I can even move this around once I've punctured the holes too many times in here um, for pressing it just way too hard even though it doesn't need it. Um, I can still, I put double sided tape on the bottom of this, but I can still maneuver it around this plate down here once I lift it up. Um, that way I can get to another clean spot of this white uh, plastic block, which then protects this metal block, but still gives me a sturdy surface, and it doesn't scratch up my stuff. Um, this is a really great product. I got it on Amazon. Um, it is in my product recommendations link as an uh, Amazon affiliate link. Um, I cannot stop recommending it enough. I think it's really great. It's essentially a drill press, but it's for punching holes or hand tools. So now you have your holes punched in your D-ring connectors and what you will do is then take your D-ring and then slide it onto your connector and match up those two holes down there. Now your D-ring connector piece is made to be slightly skinnier than the size that I've called for, the hardware size, so that you have some room to build up your edge paint. So if you left raw edges, you might feel that your um, D-ring uh, either in 3 4 inch or 1 inch does slide around a little bit but that's the reason for that is that it's meant to be slightly skinnier so that you have room for your edge paint to then uh, sit nicely inside of your hardware. So now what I will do is I just pinch it just like this. I try and keep it in the same spot as I, as I can and then I make sure that everything is kind of nothing. This inside upper gusset lining piece isn't kind of trying to bubble out. I make sure that it's nice and level so from the side you're just seeing that. You're not seeing this seam seep down here. But then I will again make sure that I'm keeping everything as aligned as I can and carefully place it onto the side of my bag. And now I want to make sure that this is centered uh, horizontally and so I might shimmy it over just a little bit. Just be careful while you're doing that so that you don't change the depth of which you are uh, aligning your um, D-ring here. You don't want it to be too, too tight. So then you transfer that placement with a pin. And then you can double check that it's centered if you want. Um, you can double check that depth using a ruler. Normally mine are about um, 7 eighths of an inch to an inch and so let's see this one is just about 7 eighths. It's actually right between that and so I'm just going to repeat that on the other side. I know that it's going to get me where I need it to get me and I'll be okay with that. And then I'm going to punch these holes. It's easiest to do this with a handheld punch. I know I just went on and on about my favorite standing punch, but uh, this one, this serves the purpose that we have at hand. And there we go. And so then I will take my rivet here, insert it through my D-ring connector, insert my D-ring connector through my bag. And remember we have two layers of vinyl here as well as a uh, fusible fleece and um, Decoville light plus the extra two layers of vinyl. So you have a lot of stuff holding this D-ring in place, but uh, just 
make sure that you are setting that rivet properly. That's the biggest thing, okay? Make sure you are inserting everything through the right side so that little glue dot is on the back side and it won't be seen. And then you will need to insert and, or you will need to install both of those rivets. All right, now your rivets are installed. I could have even gone down a little bit further than I did, but I'm okay with them swaying the way that they are. Happy with that. And so now all that's left is your strap. So for your strap, you'll need either the crossbody or shoulder or something in between that you have cut. Just make sure that whatever width you cut your strap, you have the correct corresponding hardware. The process for sewing up these strap for either shoulder or crossbody is the same um, up until the hardware installation and then that's where it differs. So we will just go through and make the strap now and then we'll install the um, hardware for the crossbody and I will just explain to you the differences between that and shoulder straps. So the first thing you're going to want to do with a strap is um, trace or draw a center line down the length. If you are doing um, one inch hardware that's going to be two inches in and if you are doing um, three-fourths inch hardware that will be um, one and a half inches in. Now that you've drawn that center line about a quarter inch in, I want you to place um, a strip of one eighth inch double sided tape. Once you have applied those strips of double sided tape, then you will need to remove one, just one side's backing, and fold in this raw edge just to just inside that center line. Now you can run a line of double-sided tape along the center of one of these halves. Then remove that double-sided tape backing and pinch along that center fold there and then match up those two folds and work your way from the center out. Once you've applied that double-sided tape, one thing that I recommend doing is to take your strap and just pull on it. Sometimes what happens when you're applying double-sided tape, especially something that's thicker than an eighth inch wide, um, you'll notice that your vinyl may be stretchy and your tape isn't while the backing is on. That's because it's paper, right? But then once you pull the backing off, that um, double-sided tape stretches a little bit. So while you're applying it on there, you're, you have to remember that Again, you're sewing a very long strip of fabric. And so if the tension is off somewhere in the, any of this process, it's going to affect how your strap turns out. So if you are putting on something on your strap that doesn't stretch and your strap does stretch and then you're folding and doing all of these things, at some point there's inconsistencies between the tape that you put on and the strap ability to stretch. So what you can do is then just tug on your strap just a little bit and that will fully stretch and break any tension from that tape being applied. I know it sounds a little kind of crazy but um, trust me especially if you're not using eighth inch double sided tape like I've used. Um, it's, it happens very easily with like half inch double sided tape or quarter inch double sided tape. So just something to keep in mind, give it a try. You can tell me I'm crazy, I will accept it. Um, it's just something that I recommended that I personally do. And then we will sew along these long edges here using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Now that you have sewn up your strap, 
If you're using a, if you're making a shoulder strap, it's as simple as just making those holes uh, that I've explained to you in the pattern at the measurements I've given you, and then inserting your snap hook, matching up those holes, inserting a rivet, and then uh, setting that rivet, okay? There's enough space here for you to then also install a strap end if that's how, if you would like to do that. If you don't want to install a strap end on here, you can always make this a little bit, just move everything down maybe like a quarter of an inch and that'll give you less of an overhang with your um, strap edge. Now, for a crossbody, it's a little different because you have a third piece of hardware. And so what you'll do is you will insert your strap like this through your tri-glide, match up those rivet holes and then match them up or insert the rivet and then you will set the rivet. Here's a little tip for you. If you're using a tri-glide like this, that's a very wide open mouth, it can be a little hard if you're using a cam snap press to get this out of the way while you're pressing for a proper rivet. So what I do is I just move it in like this and that gives me enough clearance to then set my rivet. Hopefully I saved somebody else a headache. That was an issue for me for a couple times using these um, narrow, uh, wide mouth um, uh, tri-glides. So after you install your tri-glide, you'll then insert your snap hook or one of them. And you wanna make sure that you are keeping this folded edge inside of the loop. And then you will feed this back through like so. And then you'll feed again through the tri-glide. And then you will insert your snap hook on this other end. Finish poking out the little spots of my holes. and match up those holes and insert that rivet. Then you'll just need to ins uh, press the rivet and then if you're gonna use strap ends, install the strap ends. All right, and now your crossbody strap is done or your shoulder strap is done. And now I'm just gonna go over how to do the bonus section, which is a, um, a hybrid strap between, a cross between a, a, a chain strap and a shoulder strap. It just makes having a chain accent on your uh, strap be a little bit more comfortable and show you a different technique as to how to sew a strap without any raw edges anywhere. If you wanted to opt in for the bonus strap, then you will need the strip of vinyl or um, fabric that I have mentioned in the pattern, as well as two 3 4 inch D-rings, uh, your two strap extenders, and two rivets. Now, the length of your um, strap extender will determine if you are going to have a shoulder strap or a crossbody strap. And so part of the reason for this strap addition to the pattern was that I know that um, the length of shoulder strap included in the pattern um, is not going to fit everyone. I know I wanted to be a little bit more inclusive, but also I wanted to add in a little bit of pizzazz to that. So for the strap extenders, you could always just make it uh, this length that I provide can stay the same because the only purpose of this is to go over your shoulder. You could always make it longer, but just keep in mind you have the width of fabric as your limitation for how long you can make this unless you want to piece it together. With that being said, your strap extenders will then determine even further whether it will be a shoulder or a crossbody strap. Now you can get these in all lengths. You will find them a little bit more easily in uh, seven inch lengths, but if you go up to about 20 inches or so, then you can make your bag um, 
function as both a shoulder strap and or your strap function as both a shoulder strap or, and a crossbody because it'll be long enough where you could clip this onto your strap and then instead of just clipping this other snap hook down onto your D-ring, you could then feed it through that D-ring and then clip this back up onto the D-ring on the strap. And so it would be like this, and that would enable you to have a shoulder strap, and then you would just unclip it and then snap this onto the D-ring, and then you have your crossbody strap. And the length of that, again, is going to be determined by the length of, of chain that you have. You can always buy a normal crossbody chain and then you can cut this down. You see all these links can be opened and so you can open them. And if you have two additional, um, these are normally like three fourths inch uh, snap hooks. If you get more of these snap hooks, then you can just snap them onto the, um, the normal purse chain and then there you go, you have a kind of convertible strap there. So it's just something to keep in mind, something to play with, another piece of hardware, another way to add some bling to your bag and um, you can go from there. And you don't even need to use um, snap hooks like this. You can see in the pattern I used um, circle snap hooks and so once I got to the link that I was happy with and the length that I that I had, I then just used my circle uh, snap hook and then that was on the one end and then I used it to snap onto the D-ring on the strap. So you have a lot of options. It's just, you know, what you have on hand, what you've ordered, what you have to work with. So just play with this and um, it's, a, it's a good method to know and to have and kind of put in that vault of yours. The first thing that you will do is measure a center line down the length of this strap just like you did on our, or just like we did on the crossbody strap. You can use eighth inch tape like we've been using for the whole pattern or if you have something wider you can use that. I suggest um, a quarter inch, nothing really bigger than that or else you do risk sewing it. Uh, or sewing over it. So then just take this double-sided tape and apply it right over that line. Or if you are um, using eighth inch double-sided tape, then uh, just run it right alongside each other along that line that you drew. Then remove that double-sided tape backing and fold these edges again working from the center and, and going out and, and you can meet these right in the middle. Okay, so fold these long edges to that center line and then fold in the other side and actually this time instead of leaving that small gap, we're going to butt them right up next to each other. After you have folded in those long edges to meet in the middle, then I give you instructions to measure in from one edge of, the, of your strap and make a short vertical line. Go ahead and do that now, and so will I. After you have drawn that line, I want you to take the line where you, the edge where you didn't draw and match that up right there with that line that you did draw. We're putting those wrong sides together and we're folding it. At this end down here where you have that fold, give it a good crease. And then open that crease up and use that crease as a little reference. And you can draw a little line there if you want. So the point of that line that you drew on the inside of that crease is just to be a visual marker for us to place our double-sided tape in. Since the whole strap is going to be folded over on itself, we don't need double-sided tape down here because we'll have it down here. So you want to place double-sided tape from this line here to about right there, about halfway between this line and the edge. Then remove that double-sided tape backing. And take this edge without any tape and align it right here with that line. And then just carefully align those folded edges with each other and give it a good press. Then fold in this edge right here and match it up with that raw edge right there. 
You want to get it as nice and snug as you can. When you sew it, it will make it even more snug. But this will be in the area where the D-ring is, so it will be mostly hidden. But you still want to keep it nice and flush so it stays this way. So what you will do is then sew along these four edges here using a 3 8 inch, or I'm sorry, using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. As you can see, I've sewn all four edges, and then I have knotted my thread and melted those little thread tails to the back of my strap. I've kept that within close to the edge so that when I fold it over my D-rings, it gets hidden. I also instruct you to make some markings. These are different than the other strap um, marking pl rivet placements, so make sure that you are double checking that. But once you've placed the marked those two holes, go ahead and punch those holes, and then we will insert the D-ring, uh, and then match up the holes, insert the rivet, and set the rivets. Okay, I've punched those holes. I'm gonna insert my D-ring, and then my rivet. And you'll see when we insert it on this side, we're gonna have, we're gonna kind of cover that um, match up there, just because of the proximity to the D ring. It's gonna distract people's eyes, and it's gonna be really hard to see it. Period. So then we'll set these rivets. So there you go. That is your accent strap. This part right here is meant to go over your shoulder to keep it more comfortable, and then you still have some nice accents to your bag with the chain. And there you go. Congrats! I hope that you love your Aries crossbody, or if you're gifting it, or there's somebody else will be the recipient of it, I hope they love it too. I love them, I think that they're great, and this is actually going to be my personal bag, which is the first time I've made a bag for myself in almost three years, which is awesome. That's how much I love it. So, thanks for tuning in, thanks for supporting my small business, and happy sewing!